So I have a pleasure to introduce Judge Ambro. She's uh, well, actually, she also runs her own event, which is called um, Search Search London. Yeah, I was checking them. So as Alexandra said, I'm going to be talking to you about some SEO myths and tips to implement SEO and social for those on a budget. So. I'm just going to do a brief intro to myself. Uh, thank you, Alexander, for saying that. Uh, yes, I, I run uh, Search London. Um, so that's been for six and a half years now, and we have just under 2,000 members. And I also have been working agency side, uh, freelance as well as uh, client side. I'm also a moderator of an event called Search Elite that's taking place in London uh, March the 9th. Um, we have some great speakers there as well. Uh, I'm also an editor of State of Digital, and I'm also a travel blogger for a uh, website, being3.com, and I'm currently um, looking to have that redesigned, so that will be launched soon. Uh, and I'm currently working at Search Metrics, and I'll be referring to uh, some of their data in with, throughout the uh, presentation, and you guys can also download that information too. So the things that I will talk about today uh, basically, the myths I'm going to be focusing around is around the keyword rankings, uh, link building, but does social impact SEO? And then I'm going to give you some tips as well. So what is SEO? I just did a screen grab here when I actually wrote in the term, what is SEO? And as you can see, there's such a lot of information there. Um, uh, it is actually, as you all know, search engine optimization. I like to think of it as the simple, easy option because it's something that you should be doing from the beginning. It is not, oh, can you just do some SEO, SEO Joe blogs, please? It is not that. It is to be done at the beginning of any website build or even before that. It should be done at the brief stage. And it is not about tracking thousands and thousands of keywords, which uh, before, yes, um, you, you, you were able to do that because you can actually see the difference and you can actually track. Uh, the traffic from these keywords now we have 95 percent not provided so why don't people understand seo again i just did a group a little search and you can see there's uh, about 25 million results on that so there is a lot of confusion which is why i want to address some of the myths around seo today so key working, uh, keyword rankings are used to be very crucial in SEO because they worked if you uh, changed something within your page title um, you added keywords there, you added keywords in your H1 tag, in your meta descriptions, you actually did see some changes. And that's why you used to track um, these uh, keyword rankings. I myself did this um, uh, due to uh, sort of uh, people wanting to have results on where am I ranking. Uh, this is quite uh, manually, manual, and it was very time consuming. Um, now, the keywords are ranking all the time. So, if you don't realize this, uh, Chris Green actually from Strategic uh, did a study on how volatile the search are, uh, the search results are, and he spoke at Search London uh, last Tuesday, um, and um, he talked about how they did some hourly tracking. Um, off the back of that, I said, could we actually tr track election? Because of course, uh, last week was the snap election announced, announced by Theresa May, and of course, we also had the French election. So a big thank you to Chris and Simon for organizing this because Simon was on annual leave. And I'm gonna go through a couple of examples of this. First of all, I just wanted to show you this. This is a screen grab of actually uh, Chris Green's uh, volatility of the SERPs. And here, the first study that he did, or that he did with Simon, um, we had a big uh, fluctuation in the SERPs for those that were on uh, page two and above or and below, shall we say. Um, I also wanted to show you this because this was retweeted um, 168 times and it was liked by so many people. Um, so it, it goes to also ties in with my presentation that if you have content, if you've got something good and you want to share about it, um, you, know, you will see um, reaction from it and you will obviously see traffic to your site. Now, looking at um, this keyword, snap election, um, again, we're looking at the term um, snap election, and here I've highlighted in the blue, it is the BBC news page. Obviously, this is the, the politics page that I am always looking at now because of uh, Brexit. <laughs> um, and you can see that this actually started at position one, but there is a drop in and out as well. 
Another one is The Guardian. Again, The Guardian is also uh, quite a well-known, very well-known website in the UK, and it is dropping quite considerably too. Um, you can see there's bigger drops um, from other websites, but I, due to time, I focused on these two. So BBC was position one, the first page, the first uh, news page to break this uh, snap election from Mrs. May. Uh, then it dropped position seven um, throughout this uh, hourly ranking. We also saw the Guardian fluctuate quite a lot um, as well. Now, what is interesting about this is because it is a, a term that obviously is in the news a lot, um, but these sites are ranking um, on the first page of Google. But what Chris noticed in the last study is that they actually had more volatility if they were on page two and below. But we're actually seeing the same type of volatility here. So it shows that you know it's very hard, even for authority sites that are ranking in the first page of Google to really keep the same ranking. So if that is the case, how can we actually control rankings uh, for clients going forward? And should we actually be monitoring uh, for these keywords anyway uh, going forward for our clients? I have another bit of evidence here as well uh, that shows actually according to the search metrics ranking factor study that came out in December last year that actually only 53% of the top 20 URLs had keywords in it. So uh, people are not actually looking at and optimizing within their title tags anymore or even in H1s. Here we can see that the, under the 40% of the landing pages actually had uh, any keywords in their H1 tag. Now we're looking at 10,000 uh, relevant keywords within the search metrics uh, ranking factors. So this is just an example. You can see this is the top one. The top one uh, was obviously in 2015. You can see that it's closer to uh, maybe the 80%, so 77% actually of the sites had uh, keywords and titles and obviously then it dropped down to 53% which is the, the line below. And this one again it shows the top line was 2015 the keywords in the description and again it dropped in 2016 so less people are using uh, keywords in the description. Uh, and the reason really is because you're seeing that the importance of these individual keywords actually continues to decline as a result of uh, Google's machine learning algorithm. So another example I'm going to show you is a travel blog. So uh, Ben uh, Ben Holbrook, um, he's a friend of mine. He has this uh, travel blog. This is great. Uh, I don't want to show you an example of how he uses how he um, gets more traffic to his blog, uh, more publicity, but he doesn't focus on rankings. So this is the most popular post that he has: the essential things to do in Barcelona. It gets up to 200 reads a day in the UK. Sorry, in summer. So does he use the keywords everywhere? Nope. Does he optimize the title tag? Not for Google. So this is his title tag. And this is his meta description. How can I find that? It's in his code. This is his blog post. So. Uh, this is written, as you can see, August 2012, and then again in August 2015. Now, as you can see, um, you know, with many, this is what Christopher is talking about. This is what uh, a few of the other speakers early today was talking about as well, that, you know, you will you write a piece of content, uh, you promote it, and then you'll forget about it. Um, in this particular case, uh, Ben did not forget about it. Um, he actually um, added more to it and actually includes more than five um, different things to do in Barcelona. So, did he focus on the rankings? No, he did not. He provided the content that the people want to see, and he added more to the blog post, as I said. And he's now a travel writer for numerous um, companies and sites, as you can see below. So, why visit his blog, and why visit other uh, sort of uh, websites or other blog posts in future? Really, um, I've highlighted four things here, but the main one really is the value. He adds the value to people. You know, he talks about the culture, things to do, and things that are outside the generic box. So and that, the second uh, sort of myth I wanted to speak about was link building. So the more links the site has, the higher it rank. Of course, that used to be true, as we know. Uh, Christopher was just talking about that. But with the increase of mobile, it's just one of the factors. 
So um, again, looking um, at the search metrics ranking study that came out last year, they have found that the search engine rankings are no longer determined primarily by the rank ranks. So increase in mobile search queries is one reason. Also, the fact that URLs on mobile devices are often liked or shared, but they are rarely actively linked. And another reason is, of course, the increase in prominence of apps and app rankings in organic search. Uh, I'm also going to show you in my next example, again, going back to this uh, website, Driftwood Journals, um, they have less than 100 referring domains to the site. Uh, the page strength, so the search metrics page strength, so it's out of 10, it's only got two. But the, the Telegraph still found his blog and he's writing for them. He's also um, flying over Europe and writing as a travel blogger and also writes for Expedia as well as uh, published a mini guide as well last year. So you can see there Barcelona blogs, he's ranking on the first page. I am in Spain and I'm looking at this. Um, and then this is an example, another example. This is a really good uh, brunch and um, a brunch blog. It's about uh, places to eat in Barcelona. Uh, this person is ranking on the first page of Google, uh, but uh, oops, but they have got hardly any backlinks. So social, uh, this is the third area that I wanted to to analyze. Oh, that I just wanted to mention. And um, the people are confused about um, if social affects SEO. We want to know this from. Um, we really want to find out this from. Uh, Google, uh, they said that they do not use it in in their search ranking factors. They actually did a tweet about it. The search for, the search uh, short version is no, we do not uh, factor this in. But according to the search metrics ranking factors, um, this correlation between the social signals and the ranking positions this is very high, and the number of the social signals per landing page has remained constant with last year's paper. I'm going to show you some examples as well. So impact on a small website for Twitter. So I interviewed, interviewed L.A. de Solis, a uh, well-known speaker, um, obviously, in the industry. And she was speaking at my Search London uh, sixth birthday party. So I interviewed her, um, and then I tweeted it. Um, a few days later, she tweeted it back uh, and got a massive in spike in traffic. I appreciate uh, I got a tail off at the end of the, of the traffic, but um, I will be... I then uh, promoted more traffic, promoted more blog posts later, and got more of a surge. So um, if you want to promote on a budget and you want to drive traffic to your website, into people because it's double promotion. You can do this in the form of blog posts. You can also do this in a podcast or on interviews. Um, so going back to um, some of the speakers that spoke earlier today when saying that you need to be uh, you know, engaging and you need to be interactive and active on, on social media. This is very true. I have more than 600 so-called friends on Facebook, but I was a bit quiet on Facebook because I don't like promoting lots of things. Um, so when I then uh, promoted about my travel blog being third.com, I just got about 38 uh, likes instead of uh, closer more to maybe 100 or so. But I still got um, obviously a spike in traffic there. Um, which was nice. Again, this is a small site, um, but it was still good to get that spike in traffic. And obviously, I'm continuing to um, take part and share uh, and share in that as well. I'm also taking part in other competitions as well around travel. So, I also wanted to show you the third area of how to promote. Um, let's say without a budget and also a new website. So as I mentioned, I'm a moderator for Search Elite. This is a new conference taking place in London on May the 9th. We've got eight different search professionals from eight different areas of the industry. It's going to be a great event because it's just one track uh, one day in London. So we started this tracking in February. Obviously, we've got peaks and troughs. And I'm going to show you what channel worked best. So here we are, big peaks, the 7th, the 16th, and the 22nd. Now on the 16th, 16th, I did post on, on LinkedIn, um, and on the 22nd as well, I, I basically shared um, the the podcast that I did with Jim Banks. Throughout all of February, Craig, who is the director of Search Lead, was actually um, sharing uh, Search Lead and sharing more information through his LinkedIn channels, um, and we got a lot. The majority of the traffic was actually direct in February. In March, it was a mixture between uh, social and direct and why I'm highlighting these two is because on these days we had quite a high percentage on social and out of that a high percentage on LinkedIn 
Another example here, April 5th and April 12th, um, I can see a direct correlation between the podcast I showed about David, who spoke earlier today, and also about um, and also announcing it's four weeks to go until uh, until the search elite. So, um, how else can you get um, or see an impact on SEO uh, from social? Again, just going to highlight this one. This is the uh, Ben's podcast. Sorry, this is Ben's uh, travel blog. He tweeted to Lonely Planet. They tweeted it back to their million plus followers. He obviously got quite a substantial number of retweets. But the main thing was obviously he saw an increase in visibility on his site. Uh, this was back uh, a few years ago, but it's still actually um, it's still visible. I did this uh, when I was in Spain uh, a couple of weeks ago. So budget tips in 2017 and beyond. I wanted to show you these four areas um, and then uh, close the presentation. So choose a social media channel that you want to have. So Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, whichever you want. Um, but the thing is, you really do need to be uh, you need to be consistent. Uh, LinkedIn, I said it's B two B. It can also be B two C as well. But uh, what you do need to do is just choose this uh, one channel or two, and just uh, make sure that you use it consistently. Um, I'm going to show you how to some examples of how I grew it without a budget. So Search London, as I said, is my um, uh, Search London event. It's my networking event. I grew this from eight from, well, this is just by using uh, the Search London Twitter account in one day on Brighton SEO, I gained 22 followers, which it's not a lot, but it's still, you know, I didn't have any promotion at all, just tweeting um, the events from Brighton SEO. It was then picked up by uh, the media flow as saying it's the most active and the most original tweets, tweets alongside Lucas, who also spoke early today. And then obviously, um, you know, we've featured in this media flow. It just cost me my time. Um, I'm still active on Twitter, and this is why it's important to always be active because we now have 570 Twitter followers. It grew by 55 between um, between the, before the Search London birthday party and after, and then um, I'm continuing to grow. We've now got 696 followers. Um, also, Search London is just a, has been growing organically from 200 when I took over six years ago to now nearly 2,000 members. So I'm just comparing this to my travel blog. Obviously, I didn't, I don't, I only push content out on this travel blog, 1,290 tweets compared to here, 1,517, 579, and I've got a minimum number of followers. Yeah, this is what you would expect. Um, but, you know, you can show that. Uh, I then used uh, being30.com, a Twitter account at Brighton SEO a few weeks ago. I got a few more followers. Um, not loads, but the thing is you need, it just shows you that you really need to be active on your social media platforms. Uh, this one is far more active for my Being 30 Instagram account. Got a lot more um, followers. I only started this up in January, but a lot more education interaction so far. So the second area I would suggest on a budget is really you need to provide the contents that you want. Please don't think that it is just, um, you know, something for the short term. It is something that can be used for video, um, a couple of video examples here. You can also use it for photos. Um, and this one actually is photos of Paddy Mugan and his wife. Uh, they traveled around the world and did thumbs up in every photo. And uh, Metro picked it up and uh, it got tweeted out quite a lot. So it, that was just a photo. Uh, I also think it's nice to say thank you. This is an Instagram account of mine when uh, there was French airstrikes three weeks ago. Um, and I actually got the most amount of likes for any of my posts just by saying thank you. Again, I would not be focused on word count. This is coming from the search metric ranking factors that actually showed they studied uh, quite a high number of um, in their ranking factors. They found that actually um, some industries had more word count than others. For example, here we have the health has a higher word count. Uh, followed by um, e-commerce and finance. So I think it's very important, especially if you have or do not have a budget, sorry, if you have a low budget or a small budget, timely content. So I, I wrote up about Brighton SEO in April, published it on Sunday, the day after, got great results from uh, Twitter. You know, a lot of people picked it up, which is great. Also from LinkedIn, I would also use this LinkedIn um, as a way to promote yourself. Um, got 208, 2,830 views, 
most from my second degree network. And I've got nearly 1,500 uh, connections. So um, that's just my first connections. So you really do need to um, use your social media channels and use the channels that you do have without it costing you a fortune. Impact of traffic, this is a big little spike, but still that's quite nice to have. Imagine if this was your own website or your company website, I mean. I also saw a big impact in Twitter as well. Uh, nice increase there. So relevant and timely content is very important. For example, um, this is another example where my colleague actually wrote his own website about the referendum. Um, he set it up in June 16th, one week before the vote. And then by the end of June, 20, by the end of June, oh, sorry, by the end of uh, June the 20th, just a few days later, he had more than uh, 20,000 visits. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that did not uh, sway the referendum to be remained, but it was still um, a great, a great example of the timely content. Uh, you know, the same thing that you can be said by you know the tweets that you can see from this, um, because of course um, of what's happening on the news. And we just saw this as well. This was actually just um, for last last week, and we've already got ten thousand, nearly ten thousand likes. Uh, again, talking about the election. So there's lots of free tools that you can use. Um, free share, I'm running out of time here. So just wanted to highlight just a few. This is quite obvious, uh, but I do want to make uh, highlight the fact that you do sh and you should always screen grab results before and after. Many people forget about this, but this is um, you know visually stimulating and it shows you easily what's happened before and after. Social media tools. Um, so we had BuzzFeedMo earlier on. Um, you can use Hootsuite to obviously um, schedule your tweets. And then you can go back and see, okay, what changes, what did I do and what was the impact? Um, I used Keyhole um, to get those results from my Brighton SEO post. And they have a three-day free trial. So this was the example of BuzzSumo. Um, obviously, we've seen this already in the, um, when BuzzSumo was on early today. And this is a keyhole. What's nice is that it also tells you the reach and the impressions, uh, as well as the users. These are the number of users that interacted with it. Um, and you can also see who shared it. So the original post is 80%. The retweets is 20% there. And then you can also see the top sources. So here you are, you can see actually that um, there's quite a few people doing it on, on iPhone and also um, other people doing it on uh, Zapier.com. So uh, SEO really, I just wanted to reiterate, reiterate the fact that SEO is not about the keywords, but really it's, um, you know, as part of your online overall content marketing strategy, you really need to be clear on and how um, you're reporting your SEO, your social media as well. You need to be focused on which SEO and channels, sorry, social media channels you're going to use. Um, and, and then you can actually record the elements that you can control. You cannot record, um, you cannot uh, control your keyword rankings, but you can record the traffic and you can have an impact on the traffic. You can have an impact on the sales and you can have impact on the conversions. When you write a piece of content, um, you know, don't just uh, publish and forget. As we saw earlier on today in, um, at Digital Olympus, you know, people that added more content to their posts, we saw that um, people are coming back you really want to record the results that you get, however small they are, and you know work on increasing them, work on getting better conversions. So thank you very much, everyone, for your time. Um, sorry, I just want to say, so SEO and social need to work in partnership. Um, feel free to get in touch with me. I'm on um, my website, uh, SEO Joe Blogs as well, Twitter, and also my travel site, uh, being30.com. Uh, thank you very much, Alexandra, for having me. I appreciate it ran over a little bit. Apologies for that. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions.